Sunday up in the Port First United Methodist Church. Today is May the 31st. So we are having services both pre-recorded but also in the church parking lot this Sunday at 9 o'clock but also on June the 7th at 9 o'clock and we will share in Holy Communion in the parking lot service as well. Jeff Stark here, youth minister, is going to preach today, and so we ask a blessing upon him. But thank you so much for coming and listening. Uh, please share this with others um, of the worship service that we have today. Thank you for um, coming. Good morning. Today is May 31st, and I'm bringing you the announcements. I want to continue to remind you to please check your emails. Um, the, that information that comes through there gives you information as to what is going to be continuing to go on with the services. We are continuing for the first few weeks at least of, of June and um, today to have our parking lot services at 9 o'clock in the parking lot if you are interested in participating in that. And the 7th of June will be our communion Sunday and we will have that in the parking lot as well. So if you are interested in participating, please come and join us. Birthdays we have for this week on May 31st, Gregory Walter. On June the 1st, Adrian Weigel. The 4th, Pat Legner. The 6th, Kay Fillmore and Nancy Hoback. And for anniversaries, we have just one on June the 4th, Tyler and Becca Librator. We encourage you to continue to bring in um, non-perishable items to the cart in the parking lot area. And hope you have a great day. Hello again. We are going to sing the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Uh, with me, I have Ms. Terry Burkhardt, our worship committee chairperson, and also playing on the piano um, is Mike Gillock. And so we hope you enjoy. Please sing with us at home, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. It's on page 89 in our Methodist hymn book.
bless you at home. Good morning. Today's message is all about following God and trusting Him. And sometimes it can be a challenge because we don't see Him. We kind of forget that He knows what He's doing. He's going to lead us correctly. We just have to trust Him. So we're going to do a little activity here. So I need a bag of water. I need some pencils. I have colored pencils. And then a volunteer, a helper. So, Thor. If I hold this bag of water over your head and I poke holes into it with pencils, do you trust me that it won't leak on you? Yes, I trust that it won't leak on me. Do you have faith in me that it won't leak on you? I have faith in you that it won't leak on me. Okay. So we'll go with one first. Oh look, no water. Do you trust me if I do it with another one? Yes, I trust you do another one. What if I do a third pencil? Yeah. How about another one? Why not? It didn't leak. It didn't poke. And sometimes in our lives, it's like holes um, with friends moving or losing a pet or us moving. It's like a change. But we have to have faith that he's going to lead us like how none of the water came out. God's there. You have to trust him because he'll lead you and he'll make sure the water doesn't fall on you and that you'll be okay. So remember, trust in God.
Hey guys, for today's student section, I wanted to tell you a little story. So once upon a time, there was this little boy named David. And uh, David was the youngest of his siblings, and he was just out uh, tending sheep and doing the family business, just helping out around the house. And then one day, there was this big war, and uh, there was this guy, Maybe, maybe you know the story. It's called David and Goliath, and uh, the Philistines sent out Goliath. And he said, "I want to fight somebody. Send me out your bravest warrior." And then David came out, and he was dressed, uh, you know, for battle, and he had just a slingshot and a, some stones, and he ended up taken down Goliath and Goliath this big big behemoth of a man um, was like who are you that come at me with sticks like he was insulted because he was this big strong warrior of a man and David was just this little shepherd boy who nobody really thought could have the power to do anything and um, but he ended up leading leading his uh, the troops to battle and and they got the victory over the Philistines and God chose David even though he was like maybe one of the unlikeliest of candidates he was young and they said he was handsome I don't know why we know that detail but um, but God used David and equipped him with exactly what he needed to um, take down the enemy. And just because he was young, God didn't care. God used him anyway. And just because he was young, that didn't matter. He could still lead the people. Um, so even though you're young, uh, you can still lead. You can still go into battle for the Lord. And the Lord can still use you and equip you to, um, to take down the enemy. So um, don't look down on yourselves because you're young. It says that in uh, 1 Timothy. So, Hi everyone. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heaven and the earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, and the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the new mercies you have for us every day. Thank you for your grace, for your leading, for your kindness, for your gentleness, for your love. Lord, we just, um, we lift our hearts to you and our concerns, Lord, and we give you our burdens. We know that you can bear them so much better than we can, and to you, they're so much smaller than they are to us. So, Lord, we give these joys to you and, and gratitudes to you, but also we give these burdens to you. And Lord, we just thank you um, that you're ever present and always with us, that you love us, that you care for us, that you uh, will never leave our side. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, as forgive us, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. It is May 31st, and we are having our offering. We continue to ask you to please mail in your offering or to do it online or direct deposit. The offering is very important to the life of the church. We are continuing to have our services and pay our staff for the many things that they are doing. So it's very important that we continue to have your support in that situation. So please, um, please continue to send that in to us. Thank you. As the pastor of the church, I want to thank you for giving in many different ways. If you are giving online electronically through the church website at laportefumc.org, we thank you for that. If you're mailing in your tithe uh, checks weekly or monthly, we thank you for that. If you're coming to the parking lot worship services and giving in that way, we thank you for that. The work of the church and the bills continue to come in, so we thank you so much for your gifts to the church that you love.
Let us sing together the doxology, thanking the Lord for the gifts to the Lord's work in the church. blessings you provide in our lives. Continue to use these tithes and offerings to further bless others. Amen. Hi, my name is Hattie Rudnick and I will be reading Matthew chapter 19 verse 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. After 24 years, the talented Rosemary Dorr has made the hard decision to retire. And during her time at the First United Methodist Church here in Laporte, um. she has touched everyone who has walked through the doors, whether it be with her musical talents, her friendship, words of wisdom, guidance, or many other capacities. I know alone in my short time, I've been lucky enough to be touched by her. Though there are a few lucky individuals in this world who are blessed to call her mom. Please enjoy this beautiful musical piece up next from our talented son, Rob Dorr, as he plays the song, God Be With You, on the French horn. What's neat about this piece is he's playing all five parts, as you'll see in this clip. Enjoy. Good morning. As I'm sure you have heard, um, I have accepted a senior pastor position for Riverside Bremen United Methodist Church and Inwood United Methodist Church. They're about 50 minutes southeast of here. 
and uh, we're really excited but we're also a little sad because we are transitioning and we've come to love uh, each and every one of you and so today I want to talk a little bit about following Jesus the first thing about following Jesus is that it's not always easy or convenient um, God has blessed my wife and I with our current home of three years when we moved in the walls were completely white, uh, the, the yard was plain, and uh, by the grace of God, we painted the whole place, we've done so much landscaping, we've changed fixtures, um, and it's perfect. We love our home. We've had two baby, beautiful baby girls um, while living at this home and they don't know anything other than this home. Um, it's close and near to all of our family, um, except for my brother who moved out to Idaho, that guy. Um, we have a gas station that's, you know, conveniently located a two minute walk from our house. So we like to go there and get a snack or a drink uh, every once in a while. And if we need to go real shopping, we go to Walmart, which is five minutes down the road. Um, we have great neighbors. It's a great neighborhood. It's beautiful. Like the trees are amazing. Um, there's a great place to walk. It has nice sidewalks. Um, it has a new roof. Uh, we've got, we've got uh, a pool and a, a play set for the girls. And we just love our home. But in this season, God has said, drop it. Come follow me to Bremen, Indiana. And so I, I just feel like that's what he did with his disciples. And God right now is telling us, hey, come drop, drop your, drop your nets, drop what you're doing, and come follow me to Bremen. And so this isn't going to be easy for us. Um, we're having to move further away from our families. Um, we're leaving our church and our friends. I've only really ever lived in LaPorte County and um, I've had a lot of different jobs and I've met a lot of different people, gone to several different churches and um, I just have come to love the people of LaPorte and my heart is here. Um, but God is saying, hey, come, come follow me. So, you know, with this difficult transition, God God used the Bible and gave me a verse in my Bible app. And uh, the verse was out of Matthew chapter 19. And uh, and then I ended up putting it in context and looking at it in, in a passage. And so verses 16 through 28, Jesus tells this, this story with, um, with his disciples. It says, just, just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? What, why do you ask me what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony. Honor thy father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then... Come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. And if we're all real with ourselves, we live in one of the wealthiest countries uh, in the world. And we each have real wealth. If you're thinking, I don't have real wealth, you have wealth. Um, there are kids who eat dirt cakes uh, to get their nutrients. Um, we have a lot of great wealth. And for us, the Lord's blessed us with this home and, um, and we do love it. And, and, to, and to me, it feels like great wealth. Jesus said to his disciples, 
Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And that was that verse that he gave me. With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. As I laid in bed last night, awake at four in the morning, in Avery's bedroom, um, cause she climbed, she's like, Dad, I wanna go in my bedroom and go to sleep. Yes. All right, so I went and we cuddled up in her bedroom and it's my favorite bedroom of the house. It has a beautiful window and it's a cool blue color and it, out, it looks over the neighborhood. And I thought, with God, all things are possible. This is just a home. This is just a, a gift. And if God has given us this once, he can give us, you know, a beautiful home again. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, I'm going to insert, or, or grandparents, which would be my, my father or my mother, um, or children, or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Indeed, God has blessed us with a lot of amazing things, including our home. But now he's saying, drop it and come follow me. So in faithful trust and in obedience, we are following him. So the first thing about following Jesus, it's not always easy. It's not always convenient. The second thing, following Jesus looks different. When Jesus pulled the disciples uh, together and he, he told them to follow him, it wasn't what they were doing. Not one of those disciples were all already following Jesus. Andrew, James, Peter, and John were all fishermen. Levi was a tax collector. Simon was a zealot. Judas was a thief. And some of the others were unknown. But whatever their realms of business or life was, um, when Jesus said, come follow me, it looked different than what they were used to. So currently right now, I'm a youth minister and Jesus is saying, follow me. And I'm moving into senior leadership uh, of, of these churches. And that's going to look entirely different than what I'm uh, used to. There will still be principles that will apply, but... Um, these churches that God has entrusted me to shepherd are going to look different. They're going to feel different. The landscape that surrounds them is different. We're in, you know, the heart of Laporte here at First United Methodist Church. That one, uh, one Br Bremen Riverside, is out in the middle of the country. There are cornfields surrounding it on every side. Inwood is in centrally located in a tiny little town. Um, and so those churches look different. Um, Marshall County, downtown Bremen, they look different than what I'm used to. Um, not being able, going into Plymouth Walmart is going to look different than what I'm used to. When I go into Walmart here, I'm blessed to know people and be able to, you know, say, hey, how's it going? You know, what's going on in your life? I have to start that all over again. It's going to be very different. Um, the school systems are different, the parks are going to be different, the community is going to be different, but because I'm following Jesus, 
it has his blessing on it and so it's going to be good um, going back to Matthew 19 29 and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children's or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life there is blessing in this for us because we are leaving so much now granted we're only 50 minutes away and we'll still be able to um, visit and see you know my parents and grandparents and great grandparents and and um, you know you know visit you know churches maybe occasionally you know if we're on vacation we can come and visit but um, God says you will reap reward because you've done this for my sake and this is we are doing this for God's sake for we are following Jesus so um, we're just taking that that step in faith now is this what I imagined it would look like absolutely not I thought I was going to be here for a long time I thought I was gonna be here for a while I absolutely love my job here at First United Methodist Church I love the youth I love getting to hang out with them I love um, every one of you that I see on Sunday I love being here I love the mentorship that I've been getting from Bob I love uh, the staff here um, so you know but I'm leaving all of that to follow Jesus and it's gonna look different so first thing was that it's not always easy or convenient the second thing is following Jesus can look different than what you're used to um, but I think the last and final thing that I'm going to talk about in regards to following Jesus and is the most important. It's always necessary. Following Jesus is 100% the thing we are supposed to do in life, no matter what it looks like. He said, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's in John 14, 6. Also in Matthew 4, he told the disciple, drop your nets and go. I'll make you fishers of men. In Luke chapter 14, there's a section of the Bible that reads, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, his wife and his children, his brothers and his sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And you're like, whoa, like, what do you mean? Jesus just told us to hate. Didn't he just tell us to honor our father and mother and to love our neighbor in the Matthew passage? Yes, he did. But I think here in Luke, Jesus is speaking in relatives. Further down in, in verse 33, he says, In the same way, any of you who do not give up everything cannot be my disciple. So he's saying, if you can't get rid of this, if you can't drop these things, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy of being my disciple. You have to be able to bear your cross and have that sacrifice. And I have to mean more to you than these things. Do I love my current home? Do I love this community? Do I love the mentorship that I'm getting here? Yes, I love it all. But should I be willing to give it all to follow Jesus? Absolutely, 100% of the time, 100% necessary. All those things, it should feel as though I hate those things in regards to following Jesus. All other things should mean nothing to me when following Jesus. And if it's not that way, then Jesus says, you're not worthy of being my disciple. But remember, in Christ, all things are possible. Like, he has equipped and enabled me to follow him. He has given me strength, and he has given me courage, and he has given me uh, not a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. He has walked me through. He's made my path straight. Like, all of these assurances that he has given me. <sighs> so, remember, remember, Christ gave it all for us. Christ left heaven and came down 
for us. He gave it all. He sacrificed his life for us. So we are sacrificing our life for him. We're sacrificing what's convenient, what's easy, what it looks like now for what he has in store for us, for what he has called us to. A lot of you have already lived this and you have followed Jesus your whole life and your blessing is going to be a great reward in heaven and bless you for that. Um, some of you, there's still going to be sacrifices ahead and uh, God's going to call you to follow him in ways you have never expected and you didn't see coming. And it may look different than what following Jesus looks like right now for you. And many of you are called to follow Jesus right here at First United Methodist Church. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. So whatever following Jesus looks like for you, it's always 100% necessary. So we love you. Um, bless you all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time uh, that we've gotten to spend here at First United Methodist Church. I thank you for the relationships that we've built. And I thank you that um, there are going to be many more great relationships to come with future youth ministers here um, at First United Methodist Church. And God, we trust that you've called uh, myself and my family to Bremen. And we just ask your blessing over the relationships that are going to happen there. And Lord, I ask a blessing over First United Methodist Church. And as they have sown greatly into um, us while we have been here, will you continue to pour out your blessings a hundred times fold um, over this church. So God, we just thank you. We trust you. We know you are good. We know you are uh, guiding us and making our paths straight. So thank you for blessing this time that we have been here, and thank you for the many blessings that we have in the future. Amen. God bless. Hello at home. We are going to sing the wonderful hymn, There's Within My Heart, a Melody, on page 380 in our Methodist hymn book. With me singing is Terry Burkhart, our worship committee chairperson, and also playing on the piano and accompanying us is Mr. Mike Gillock, and we'd like to thank him for helping us uh, with these. So there's within my heart a melody. Now in the second verse, we are going to hum, and we want you to sing at home. Sing at home on all of them, but we're just going to want you to sing um, on your own on the second verse. So there's within my heart a melody, 380 in your Methodist hymn book. Let's sing it together.
mercy of the benediction of our Lord. May God bless you. May God use you to bring peace, love, and joy to the community. May God use you to share the gospel to those around you and at work. And may God bless us all until we meet again. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.